Hi, my name is Susan Magnano, and I'm a photographer, light painter, and educator, and welcome to the Catskills. It is gorgeous here. We couldn't have asked for a better location, and we found an awesome barn that we are going to light paint. And not only are we going to light paint, we're going to do some low-level light painting, and we're going to do some other types of light painting. So I can't wait to show you guys what we find. So today we're going to be talking about low-level lighting. The difference between low-level lighting and light painting is that with low-level lighting, it is a stationary light that stays in place on a light stand or on the ground and is on for the duration of the photo. It's very consistent and you know what you're going to get after a couple of tests, which is awesome. When you're doing light painting, you're kind of moving around a bit. You could be shining the light for five seconds or 10 seconds. You know, it can be a little bit inconsistent. So if I'm going to be shooting a structure that's not moving, like this awesome barn behind us, I typically use some low level lighting. So let's get into talking about the gear I'm going to be using tonight. The first piece of equipment I'm going to be setting up is the Luxley Fiddle. This is an amazing LED light. It go, it's an RGB light that also turns so many different colors and um, you can kind of just turn the wheel and put it on any color you like or you can go through all the different settings like tungsten, cloudy. It goes to even 1% brightness and you may be saying, Susan, why would you want your light to be 1% brightness and under if you use their app? Because sometimes when you're doing low level lighting, you need your light source to be super dim because your exposure is gonna be so long. So typically I'm shooting between one and 10% brightness when I'm doing my low level lighting with this Luxley Fiddle. Another piece of equipment that I use when I'm doing my low level lighting is this Nanlite Pavo tube. It's really cool because it turns so many different colors, but it also has really cool fun features like lightning bolts, candle. They have a lot of really great settings and I use this when I want it to look really funky and cool. Another really important piece of gear to have when you're doing any type of night photography is a trusty flashlight. And this one is my Nikkor flashlight. Nikkor is a great brand and I have so many of these and it's an awesome tool to have. One of the most important things we're gonna need for our photography is a camera. And I'm gonna be using the OM-1, which is Olympus's new camera. And I love it. It has so many awesome features and I'll be shooting wide. So I'll be shooting with a seven to 14. Also, I have it on my trusty Benro tripod and together this is a dynamic duo, ready to create amazing things. So now the only thing we need is darkness and I'm really excited about the possibility here. We are shooting in a completely dark environment where there'll be no, no distractions. So the only things we can really do is paint in what we want to be seen. And we'll be doing some low level lighting to light up the really cool barn. But also I might even incorporate some light designing and do some really, really cool and creative things. I don't even know what we're going to do yet, but I'm excited to find out. The reason why I chose this spot was because I like the angularness of this building. And I think it's really cool because we can look inside the doorway and we can light paint on both sides of this building. So I think we're off to a good st start and I think let's start light painting. The first thing I have in mind is to put a light inside the barn. So I have a Luxley Fiddle. I'm going to bring it inside and put it on a little mini tripod and turn it on red. So I'm going to place it inside and I'd like to put it in the center and I'm going to point it up at the roof. I have it at, I think 10% is what I'm going to start with because I like to start low and if I need to make it brighter, then I will. So I'm going to place it in here. I'm going to point it up at the roof and then I'm going to go back at my camera and take a look. All right, awesome. You can already see the red glow starting to look great inside this barn. Perfect. Next thing I wanna do is use a different color and put it on the outside. And I thought blue would be great. So let's turn this on. There we go, found the button in the dark. Perfect. And I'm gonna start at 5% brightness. And this is like a really cool color blue. The one thing I want you to think about is when you're light painting structures is the angle of light. So right now we're lighting from the inside. Awesome. Now where should we put this other one? We could push it in front. We could put it behind the camera. We could put it off to the side. They're all okay ideas, but I think this one's the best. 
I'm gonna put this one at the far end of the barn so we're looking into the shadows. I think creating shadows in your images make them the most interesting. So see what I mean? Let's take a look. So you're gonna come over here. I'm gonna kinda place it back here. And I'm, I'm gonna go back and make sure I'm not in my picture frame, but I'm gonna place it right here and I'm gonna have the light scraping across this far side of the barn but ultimately where my camera is, is gonna see, be seeing the shadow side of the light, which is, I think, the most interesting. So we have it on a nice, interesting blue color at 5%. And let's go see what it looks like back on the camera. A lot of this takes a lot of manipulation. So you might be adjusting your height level of your lights or the direction because you don't want the colors to seep into your picture frame. You just want them to shine on your structure. So it's really helpful if you have someone directing you from behind your camera, it makes the process go a lot faster. But if you don't, you just gotta get a couple more steps in. No biggie. Wow, that's really coming together. And I think it's time for a test shot. And when I do my test exposure, I'm half exposing for the barn and half exposing for the sky. So it's actually looking kind of bright. Um, so what I'm gonna do is underexpose the stop because I wanna make it dark enough so I can do my light painting. I did our test shot and I think it looks okay. It's a little bit dark and almost um, the front of the building is too much in shadow. And that's okay because that's what we're going for. We got our inside light, we got our side light and they both look okay. And now what I wanna do next is do something with the front of this barn. So I think it'd be cool if we added some smoke. We have a fog machine and I think we should try it out and see what would happen if we made the fog come out from inside the structure and see if that would add, I don't know, a little bit more interest. And, um, and then I also think we might need to add a little bit of light on that front part of the barn because it's a little bit too in shadow for my liking but i have another solution for that so let's start by trying a little bit of fog and seeing how that looks and then we're going to add a little bit of light to scrape across the front of the barn as well let's do it wow that is awesome i love the way the smoke is getting caught in the red light and the blue light and it just looks awesome one thing I want to confirm that's happening now is that we're focusing on the right spot. To make sure this picture is focused right, I'm going to turn my flashlight on, I'm going to point it at the structure, and I'm going to put in automatic focus so the camera can find the focus. And then I'm going to put it back in manual mode so it's locked in. And then we don't have to worry about the focus because the structure isn't moving and we're going to be all set. The only thing missing from this picture is the human element. I think adding a human element makes a visual image relatable. We can all identify with ourselves in the story. And then you also create a story around that person. So I'm grateful that we have a cowboy here with us. Um, I'd like to invite our cowboy to come join us in the frame. I'm um, thinking exactly, cross your legs, look like the cowboy that you are. Can you hold that pose? Okay, I think we're ready. I put my camera on a two second delay, so um, I'm triggering it. I have a trigger, I just didn't grab it, but I have it on a two second delay, so when I trigger it, there's no camera shake, and I refocused on Alejandro. He looks awesome. Gonna start our trigger. This is gonna be the coolest! I love how the smoke came out the farthest this time, like towards the camera. Perfect, let's see what it looks like. You can relax. Oh my God, it is amazing. I think we have some more creativity in us. So we're gonna try some light drawings. Check this out. So are you ready to strike your pose? Chin down and then holding your hat. So we're gonna go ahead. He's holding the hat, it looks awesome. And I'm gonna try and create a cool picture. Ready? Going, camera's going. I'm gonna do a strobe. And it's gonna be kind of a hard place to do it from. Hold it another second. Perfect, you're doing a great job. Oh, that was awesome. So we finished our last shots in the rain, but it was so worth it. We got Alejandro out here, our wonderful cowboy. We did some light painting with this tube that you're gonna learn a lot more about when we're in the city. And did some light painting with this flash. A couple things you're probably wondering is how come you didn't see me running around? 
is because I am wearing black and also because there's no ambient light hitting me. I mean, I know we have these Luxleys, but I didn't stay in one place long enough to get registered. And that's like the perk of shooting in really dark environments like this. Um, because there's no light hitting you. The only light that you're seeing in the pictures is the ones that you're creating. So as long as you're not lighting yourself up, you're not gonna be seen. So this has been a phenomenal night. We got our smoke machine working. We got rain coming. We did some backlighting. We did a lot of crazy things tonight and I'm excited. I think we got some great shots and I can't wait to share them with you guys. But I think we're wet and it's time to wrap it up. If you guys want to join me on a night photography adventure, check out my link for photo adventures. I'm doing them all over the place and follow us for our next series where we'll be talking about light painting in New York City. And let me tell you, it is going to be awesome. There's a lot of really fun challenges there, but it's also really rewarding and we'll even have a dancer with us. So tune in for that.